How thrilling is surviving on a deserted island? And with beautiful, busty women to keep you company. Nine people form three teams and arrive on the island, where they must survive with for 21 no maps, days using diamonds and no tools to win they a prize of $3 million. The for wreckage they and are debris. randomly divided into three-person teams and land on different parts of the island. At the northernmost point of the island, there's an international shipping route where they can light a signal fire. Only then will they have a chance to signal passing ships for rescue. The first team to land includes Andrew, Amber, and Trick, who all have long, flowing hair that could rival any woman's. They are all returning contestants from previous seasons. Andrew, who once quit because a tiny ant bite caused him so much pain that he had to be treated by a doctor, is back to prove he's not a wimp. Amber, with his stylish outfits and impressive assets, is also back, and I can't take my eyes off him, even if it blinds me. Amber once managed to support two men all by himself, so I believe he'll perform well again this time. Despite Amber's striking presence, some people are just born to be the main character. Trick, with his flowing hair, looks like a woman from afar but is actually another wimp up close. As the team leader, Andrew is constantly motivating his teammates, and Amber looks at him with admiration. Such a sexy man, I almost want to milk him. As soon as they approach the shore, they spot a saltwater crocodile in the distance. The less capable contestants see it as a beast to fear, while the more capable ones see it as a source of protein. Andrew's team lands in an area with the highest concentration of caimans, which are their biggest challenge. The island is also teeming with poisonous snakes and swarms of mosquitoes more terrifying than zombies. The coastline is made up of coral reefs. For the sake of the show, the producers make them swim 200 meters to the shore, turning a few seconds swim into a 10-minute ordeal. They eagerly strip off their clothes, and no one can resist Amber's boldness. Their swim is quite thrilling. Little do they know, there are crocodiles underwater. 12 kilometers away, the second team begins to land. This team includes Brent, the stunning Carla, and the brooding Nain. Their coastline is covered in volcanic rocks and sea snakes. Brent's team also consists of two men and one woman. If Carla weren't wearing a ripped outfit, I might have mistaken her for another burly male contestant. But on closer inspection, Carla is not only fair-skinned but also quite well-endowed. This team is quite strong. Brent has excellent hunting experience from previous seasons. They also have to swim a few hundred meters to reach the shore. Despite her larger build, Carla is quite attractive, and I hope they perform well. Nine kilometers away, the third team begins to land. This team has two women, which is just amazing. Is this survival or a vacation? This team includes Cher, Candace, and a guy named Justin. Fans who have watched my commentary on the island survival show might recognize Cher who left the competition after failing to conceive a child despite dating all the men. She's back for another shot at island survival. Candace, with her stunning figure and looks, is probably the most beautiful female contestant this season. Justin, the show's cameraman, managed to get paired with two women, which might not be entirely coincidental. The third team's coastline is teeming with sharks and crocodiles. But with two women by his side, Justin would probably die happy. Amber's team has successfully landed. The environment is beautiful, but Amber quickly notices something amiss. The beach is swarming with blood-sucking flies, like vampires, biting them all over. They must rely on the island's resources to survive for 21 days, using discarded bottles to collect water and old ropes for various purposes. Brent's team also begins to land. But their coastline is not a sandy beach, it's sharp rocks. Forget hunting for protein, even walking is a challenge. They are shocked upon landing but realize they must make use of the island's waste. Nain finds a broken fan on the rocks, which is just trash to ordinary people but could be useful in survival. They can turn trash into treasure, using palm leaves to make blades. Next, they need to find fresh water. Candace's team swims to the shore, which looks like a mangrove forest. Cher notices a lot of discarded items on the coast, which they can use. Seeing the two women so enthusiastic, Justin decides to let them take the lead. They collect everything they find, which will be very useful for their survival. They use these items to search for fresh water and build a shelter nearby. They have no map and rely entirely on their instincts. Brent's team finally leaves the rocks and reaches the beach. Here, they also start collecting waste, finding joy in picking up trash. On the beach, they see footprints, likely from three wild boars, which can weigh up to 145 pounds and have sharp tusks. They search the island for food and fresh water, following the footprints, hoping to find water. There are many broken fishing nets, which they can use to catch more fish. Andrew even finds a fire-starting tool.
Although it's worn out, it's still a useful lighter. In just an hour, they've collected a lot of trash. Next, they need to find a place to build a shelter and locate fresh water. Their biggest challenge is not having a map, so they don't know where to find water or resources and must explore blindly. Justin's team is still walking through the mangroves, finding only salt water, making it hard to find a place to settle. Andrew's team has been walking in the jungle for three hours, surrounded by thorny plants. Getting pricked by one would make you squeal like a pig. They wander through the jungle, unsure of how far they've gone. Fortunately, they hear the sound of running water nearby. Andrew's team finds a small stream, which, though not large, has flowing water. Amber sees this as a good sign. There might be fish at the source of the stream. Soon, they find an abandoned car. How did a car end up in the jungle, reduced to just a shell? Amber thinks it's older than his grandmother. But Andrew believes the car has only been there for about 8 years. By now, they've collected a lot of resources. Trick suggests building a shelter here. Andrew agrees, as there's water and the resources are too heavy to carry far. Amber thinks they need to start a fire quickly. The sun is setting, and the mosquitoes at night are terrifying. Brent's team is still looking for a suitable place to build a shelter, with fresh water being a decisive factor. They soon find fresh water. Brent agrees that the sun is setting and they should build a shelter nearby. They quickly start building in a clearing. Justin's team is still on the move, finding only salt water. Cher thinks building a shelter is the priority and suggests finding a higher ground. Andrew's team starts a fire using a broken lighter, creating sparks by rubbing the flint and gears. Andrew is excited, showing his wimpy side. He lies on the ground, trying to start a fire with the tiny flint while the others watch. Why don't they try multiple fire-starting methods at once? Justin's team, without a knife, can only use stones to cut branches, making shelter building very difficult. Without a shelter, Candace feels unsafe. As night falls, the mosquitoes become aggressive, having not tasted blood in a long time. At night, Brent's team is also tormented by mosquitoes, unable to sleep. Mosquitoes are everywhere, and nothing can drive them away. Andrew's team faces the same problem, covered in mosquito bites. Only imagine the worst. It's so scary. Where should we go? I'm about to jump on your back. Hey, 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 that was scary. That was really scary. I can't handle this night. Hey, hey, hey! That was scary. That was scary. That really did scare me. Yeah. I can't this night one. The sounds and movements outside the shelter are loud, making it feel like wild animals are all around. They are too scared to sleep. The next morning, Andrew's team wakes up covered in mosquito bites. Amber insists they must start a fire today, or even his impressive assets will be drained by mosquitoes. Andrew uses a shell as a knife, but it's ineffective. He resorts to smashing the wood with a stone, but it doesn't work. Maybe he's not strong enough, but he keeps trying. Brent's team explores the area after waking up and finds airplane wreckage, just a wing, with no sign of the rest. Brent thinks it's useless, but Nain believes the aluminum can be used as a rain shield. He also thinks there must be more parts nearby. He figured this was just a small piece of the plane and that more parts had to be nearby. Sure enough, they found more plane debris. This island is something else, you can find plane and car parts. They kept exploring and discovered more plane components. The items were very useful, including a pair of goggles for diving to catch fish and broken glass for making knives. They took everything they could carry back to their shelter. Meanwhile, Justin was still struggling, and Candace was covered in bites. They still hadn't built a shelter. They hadn't even found the most crucial thing, a water source. Yesterday, there was seawater here, but now it's all dried up. The tides surprised them. They kept searching for fresh water and finally discovered a new source. They filled their bottles. With water secured, they could focus on surviving. Trick and Amber came back from gathering supplies, and Andrew told them he planned to start a fire by drilling wood and needed their help. They found a plank and just needed to make a crack in the middle to drill the wood for fire. They wrapped a stick with rope and kept pulling it back and forth. But the method didn't seem to work, so they had to think of other ways. Brent's team kept collecting debris, finding plane parts scattered everywhere. They found a fuel gauge and a magnifying glass, which could be used to start a fire. He brought the items back to the shelter, giving his teammates hope for fire. Brent used the magnifying glass to focus sunlight and start a fire. Although there was smoke, the sun wasn't always out.
They kept trying for hours, but the fire still didn't catch. Nain's face got sunburned. Brent went to the stream to keep trying and saw thick smoke rising. Nain smiled brightly. As the smoke increased, Carla got excited too. Finally, Brent successfully started the fire. With fire, they could boil water and cook food. Their team was the first to get a fire going. Nain started sharpening tools and Brent saw an armadillo nearby, a great source of protein. Will Brent be able to surprise his teammates? Stay tuned for the next episode.